Visit SailRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to reupholster a round footstool using ultra leather from SailRight. In this first chapter, we'll be removing the old fabric. We're going to remove the staples that hold the uh, cambric uh, dust cover on the back side. And if I do it careful enough, I can reuse this uh, fabric. Sayrite does sell this fabric, so if you do ruin it, we have cambric dust cover fabric. Okay, now that we have the cambric dust cover off, we have to remove all of these staples. This is a time, the most time consuming task actually, but uh, it can be done if you have a good staple remover like this one. Bang! It's done. <laughs> if only it were that fast. Okay, now we're going to take off the old fabric. Uh, which is actually pretty tight on here. They made a pretty nice tight cover. I have decided to slit it because I think it'll be easier, but I'm going to do it on a seam. There's got to be a seam someplace. There it is, right there. So we're just going to slit it right on that seam to take it off. Now it should come off nicely. This is a 0.3 batting um, available at Sayorite. It basically allows the cover to be put on and allows the fabric to slip easy. It's kind of like a silk film without being a silk film. Measuring the stool and cutting our fabric panels is next. I'm going to measure the top here. And if I press in a little bit, it looks like it's 19 inches. Let's confirm that with the fabric. Yeah, 19 inches from seam to seam. So we're gonna come down uh, and measure the side. And what I like to do is have at least an inch, I'm gonna go two to the un underside and measure up to the top side and I get uh, 10 inches. Let's measure the circumference and we get, let me get my finger out of the way there, 62 and a half inches for this circumference. This ultra leather is from our scrap pile. It's an expensive material. I didn't want to waste it. I'll be able to pull out the wrinkles when I make the application. But ultra leather is a beautiful vinyl. It's a faux leather, really. And it, it stretches a lot more than most fabrics do, especially on the bias. But even a little bit on the warp and the weft, it'll stretch. Uh, backside is nice. It just feels like real leather. So we're gonna be using this. Now, the old fabric was just a regular upholstery fabric and it doesn't have much stretch at all. Actually, this one stretches pretty, let's see, the, no, yeah, the, along the warp and the weft it doesn't. Uh, the bias is right here and it stretched pretty good there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the circle to the same diameter as the chair, which I believe was 19 inches. We are not gonna add any for seam allowance because we want it to be pulled tight. I measured the bottom of our footstool from side to side and it too is 19 inches and that gives me a more rigid side to trace around. So I'm going to place it on my fabric and I've got a little fold there so I'm probably just not going to go into that. And I'm going to take a uh, scry ball and mark around the perimeter with it. We're going to cut this out with scissors. No reason to use a hot knife. There's no seam allowance added. We took the circumference of this, which is, when we measured the foam, it was 62 and a half divided by two and it's 31.25. I cut this one to roughly a little bit more than half of that or a little bit more, 35 inches. So I've added a few extra inches and I will cut this strip as well to 35 inches so that the seams when they're joined, because I'm trying to save on fabric, I'm gonna have a seam here and a seam approximately here on the other side. So this one I'll cut to 35 as well. Next up, we'll be sewing the boxing together. Okay, so as you can see, I'm saving on fabric. Otherwise, I'd have one long strip that was 10 inches that would go all the way around and have one seam, but I'm gonna have two. So I'm gonna put these to outside uh, surfaces to face each other. I'm using an expensive fabric, so I wanna try to save as much as I possibly can. 
So we're going to put a quarter inch seam stick for canvas and upholstery along this edge, very close to the edge, because I don't want it to show up after we're done sewing. And altar leather actually sticks really, or this seam stick sticks really well to altar leather. And it helps it to keep it from puckering when you're sewing. So outside surfaces are facing each other. And we're going to base this so that they're perfectly even. And bam, we're ready to go. When sewing altar leather, here are a few general guidelines. They are not rules. Altar leather stretches in all directions, so typically I cut it to the desired finish size. Do not add seam allowance. Use a size 16 needle and nylon thread. Nylon thread will stretch and go back to size when the occupant leaves the upholstered piece. Reduce upper tension of the sewing machine until the knot is slightly seen on the bottom side of the assembly. Stitch length is typically 4 to 5 millimeters. To reduce puckering or moving of the one panel over the other panel, use seamstick quarter inch basting tape for canvas and upholstery available from Sayorite. When using this seamstick with altar leather, it is typically removed after the sewing is completed. That's not the case with other fabrics, but with altar leather, it is easily removed. These principles are covered in this video, so keep watching. When you're sewing altar leather, you should always sew some scrap to make sure your tension is set right and it's sewing correctly. So I have two layers of altar leather here and I'm using a number 16 needle and nylon thread. And I have reversed the upper tension or backed off the upper tension. And I'm sewing in about a four millimeter straight stitch, four millimeters long. Okay, so let's see what it looks like. Just sew a little bit and then inspect your stitches here. I can see the knot on the top side. And on the bottom side, I do not see the knot. I'd rather have the knot on the bottom side, so I'm going to reverse the upper tension by about a half turn and sew again. I don't want any puckering on my altar leather. I can still see the knot a little bit, but can I see it on the bottom? Starting to be up here on the bottom. Let's go a half turn more and sew one more time. We want to do this until we get the knot in the middle as much as possible. There, oh, perfect. Look, no knot at all on the top and a little bit of a knot on the bottom. It's a little bit too much on the bottom, so I'm going to go a quarter turn and that should be perfect tension. This is my edge that I've basted together. We're going to put the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide on the half inch mark of the needle plate. We're going to lower our foot. We are going to do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning but trying not to go too deep into the assembly so it doesn't show up. And we're going to sew a straight stitch here. Now this is just going to be a blind stitch here. So I am not going to do a top stitch because uh, I, I think the sides look better with just a blind stitch. So this is the only stitch I'm going to do. A little bit of reversing at the end, not going too deep. And let's take a look at it. So this is our first stitch of the project. Splay it open. Yes, that looks great. In this next chapter, we'll be sewing the boxing to the top plate. Okay, so here's our banding that we sewed together, and here's our circle. We went outside surfaces to face each other, and I'm going to start sewing, leaving about five or six inches here because we're going to have to join this part together. So we'll start sewing somewhere around here and sew this together. Now, I'm not using any um, double-sided tape for this. Um, it's, it's a big circle, so it's pretty easy. So we're going to start here and I'm not going to do any reversing. I'm going to make sure my banding is up against this. Again, we're about six inches from the edge. And all I want to do is sew a half inch, which is that's why I've got my deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide here. And I want to match up the circle with the edge as I sew. So watch. So I'm pulling my circle and I'm making sure that it's matching up right across where the uh, needle is or the magnetic guide. So just take your time doing this. We are going to have a top stitch in this. Now try not to pull on the altar leather because remember it's a really stretchy material and you can pull it out of shape. All you want to do is you want to try to um, make sure that it's, the edges are lined up as you sew. So I'm not pulling on one or the other more than the other. This is a walking foot sewing machine, so it pulls this in beautifully. We're going to do this until we get about 
five inches or four inches from the uh, previous stitches and we will stop and we will not do any reversing and we'll show you what's next then. Okay, so I'm coming to that middle seam, but before I reach it, let's talk a little bit about the nylon thread. Nylon thread stretches more than a polyester thread and most altar leather is an indoor application, so it's not gonna be exposed to the sun. Nylon doesn't do as well in the sun, but it stretches and it goes back to shape beautifully. That's why I'm using a nylon thread with altar leather, because altar leather is also very stretchy. So I'm gonna take this to make this a more in invisible. Now remember, it has basting tape on it, so unfortunately the basting tape makes it hard for me to splay it open. So I'm gonna splay this open, and we'll probably have to remove some of this basting tape. I should bury my needle so that I don't lose my spot. I didn't do that. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna tear off a little bit of the basting tape here so it doesn't get in the way. I'll just take it all off actually and just do that quickly like that. Okay, now I can open this up and like that, like a little butterfly and lay it down flat. So I'm trying to be picky with this job and we'll sew over that. I'll hold that in position. Okay, we'll keep going. Okay, I am a few inches from where we need to join the banding together, so I'm going to stop. No reversing was done. Cut my threads and let's go to the table. So I've laid my fabric down and you can see this seam for this banding is over here. And if I follow that straight down, that would put the seam right about here if we wanted it to be almost directly across from each other on the side. So I'm just gonna mark the edge of the fabric there. Okay, so now that that's marked, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over as though I were sewing it and I'd mark there. Now I need to add a half inch for seam allowance and I will do that. And I need to take this one and we need to walk it around as though we were sewing it and mark right where that falls too, and I need, need to add a half inch to that one. So let's splay out this one first, and we'll do the same thing to the second one. I'm gonna take my clear acrylic ruler, and I'm gonna make sure that it's uh, perpendicular or, or parallel to this edge over here, parallel to this line, and we're gonna mark it at a half inch, because I want this to be cut straight. So right there should be nice and straight. We will measure it to make sure. There's my mark, so is it the same? It's about uh, four and a sixteenth. Yep, four and a sixteenth. So that's a half inch extra, and we're gonna do the same thing to this one. So we're gonna cut on that line, make sure you don't cut your fabric underneath on both of them. And this one too. I'm gonna use basting tape again. You saw how easily the basting tape came off of the altar leather. Um, I'm gonna probably peel it off again after this is sewn. And then we'll uh, base this directly on top. Outside surfaces are facing each other. And this makes it easy for sewing because nothing moves. Okay, we're gonna sew a half inch from this edge. Okay, make sure you don't sew into your, your other fabric. <coughs> I don't have any other fabric under there. So again, this is gonna be a blind stitch, no top stitch. We are gonna do a little bit of reversing, not going too deep. And I'm gonna sew a half inch down this edge. And then I'm gonna re remove the double-sided tape so I can display that seam flat when I sew it to the uh, round top. A little bit of reversing at the bottom. Now let's remove the double-sided tape. Should be easy, easy to do. Open it up. Grab that sucker, pull it out. There we go. Okay, so now look at that. That's gonna be the perfect distance. So we'll just start sewing, and I am gonna start sewing about an inch inside of my previous stitches, and I'm gonna try to bury my needle right on top of the previous stitches, because if you're off, and then lower my foot, if you're off of the stitches, it'll show up. So now we're gonna splay this out flat, Make sure that it's up against the edge as we sew, and we're gonna finish this stitch off. So I'm sewing about an inch over my previous stitches. Everything is lined up. Nice. 
And then we want to run right into these stitches so that again we see no stitches. So now I'm I was a little bit off, but I'm I came in contact with the stitches, and I'll show you that here in a second. It's not going to be a big deal because I was off over here, but you can see I, I I ended over top of my stitches and came outside of it, so that'll look like a continuous single stitch. So we're still good. Adding a top stitch is next. I'm going to remove the magnetic guide. You don't need that. And we are going to put a top stitch in the round portion around the perimeter of the banding. And the seam allowance is going to go down the banding, not over the top. So I'm going to grab a hold of my seam allowance, which is the half inch on the underside, and make sure that it's coming down the banding. And we're going to stick this under the throat of the sewing machine. And might as well start sewing. Uh, where this uh, seam is. That'll be our, our uh, where we do the reversing. Now I'm not going to do reversing at the beginning, but I will do reversing at the end. Now you can put your stitch anywhere you want. I can put it here to the inside of the center foot on the right side, or I could put it on the outside. I think I'm actually going to go right to the outside of that foot, so I can use that as a guide. So I'm going to lower this. Let's just put it right on that. Lower that right there. Now I want, want to make sure that I pull both left and right and make sure that the seam allowance is going that direction into the banding as I sew. Do this slowly because everybody sees this. Okay, now I'm going to make sure my seam allowance is tucked into the banding. I'm going to pull left and right a little bit as I go. I'm following this outside foot here. And we're going to do this all the way around. This machine has the worker bee power pack system on it and if I want to make sure that I'm sewing slowly I can just turn down the speed. Now no matter how, how hard I press on the pedal, it always goes no faster than that. Okay, we're coming up to the beginning point, and I'm going to go ahead and cut my um, stitches here, at least on the top side, so I don't have to contend with that. And you can do a, a number of things here. Um, I'm just going to sew over the top a little bit, and I might do one stitch in reverse. To lock it in place because I want it to try and try to be invisible as invisible as possible and I'm going to try to be right over top of those previous stitches so now I'm on the seam so I'm going to put it in reverse and I'm going to do one stitch backwards and then a stitch forward and then a stitch backwards stitch forward and that'll be it coming up we'll be stapling the cover to the footstool so we're going to try to fit this on, and it might be helpful to have two people. We can't cut this, obviously. Uh, I, you know what? I think I'm going to do it this way. Yeah, this is the way to do it. And that uh, 0.3 batting helps for applications like this to slide uh, fabrics over foam because sometimes foam is really sticky. Oh yeah, that's going to look really good. So we just have to pull it nice and taut and start stapling. The first thing we want to do is we want to secure um, at, at the four northeast, southwest sides. So I'm going to pull fairly taut on this on both sides and then I'm going to release one and put a couple staples here and then over here. And what I want to do is I want to be able to pull those out if I need to. And then I'm going to come over here and here, pull fairly taut. 
hold down, once it's tight, I'm gonna hold this one down and put two staples here. And come over here, put two, and let's see what it looks like. So do you have everything centered? And I think we do. Yep, that looks good. I think that's gonna do well. So I'm happy with it. Now, take a look at this. See how this is wandering? So you wanna be able to pull the fabric to keep this stitch nice and straight. So since we have it secured here, um, I'm gonna pull right here to kind of even that out. And then I'm gonna put a staple here. And I'll probably do this rolling it around. I'm, gonna, I'm doing it like this so you can see it more than anything else. Make sure that it looks good. Put a staple here. Oops, there was nothing there because there was a leg. That looks good. We're gonna keep doing this around the perimeter and then we'll put in more staples after we're happy. We can pull staples if we need to because we're doing the bottom side but uh, that's looking good. So we're gonna keep doing this. Okay, so we actually like the way that it, the seam looks and everything, so all I'm gonna do is just put staples all around the perimeter. It's gonna have to wrinkle a little bit, but it can wrinkle on the inside. This hair at upholstery staple gun has the driver that, that buries your staple uh, well into hard assemblies, but yet doesn't bury it to the point where it actually cuts through any vinyl fabrics. Uh, and also it's got a, a crown of a half inch. So it's a perfect upholstery staple gun. We've designed it specifically for projects like this. Now I'm gonna take scissors and cut away any of this excess fabric that's just kind of staying being proud. So when I put this on here, I can see that it's gonna show a little bit, and they actually folded it under. So I'm gonna fold it a little bit deeper around the perimeter, and I'll probably just do that with double-sided tape because it's just gonna make the job faster. So I'm gonna use the quarter-inch seam stick, and I'm just gonna baste it around the perimeter and then fold it a little bit deeper because I don't want this to show up at all. I'm gonna peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, like that. And then what I'll do is I'll just fold it in that amount all around the perimeter, making a very nice edge. And then it's small enough that it isn't gonna show up. Okay, so now just make sure that the legs are in the right spot and, we'll, and then we can staple this in place. You wanna get the staples fairly close to the edge, so that it does not ride up and get noticed. So we're gonna do this all the way around the perimeter. Much tighter than what they had, and it looks nice on the bottom side. We'll screw our legs in. Okay. Our footstool, or ottoman, is now complete. Okay, you can see that there were some creases in the fabric, and I'm taking a heat gun and I'm carefully you don't want to melt anything, but carefully put it over the top. And for ultra leather, this actually helps to take those creases out. Because remember, this was scrap leather, ultra leather that we found, and we used it. It was not rolled, it was folded. So that seems to have taken it out pretty easily. I think there were some on the side. We'll do the same thing there. Okay, when we're done, this is the reason we cut the top plate uh, to exactly the size. If I measure from my seam over to here, I get 19 and a half inches from seam to seam. I, the, the ultra leather stretches a ton. And remember, we cut this to 19 inches and we stole a half inch on each side. So it should have measured 18 inches, but ultra leather stretches. And that's why we did that. And here's a look at our stool when it's complete. Finally, the list of materials and tools we use to get this project done.
If you have any questions, be sure to give us a call or email. I'm Seth Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.